This one's called This Genre Will Replace Isekai. Oh. <laughs> Listen. You have one season of four seasons in a, in a year where there's like less isekai than usual and it's like a rom-com summer and suddenly motherfuckers are making videos <laughs> saying that the entire isekai genre is gonna get replaced i'm sorry there's too many shitty isekais to be pumped out and for katakawa to make money but hey let's see what mr totalini has to say about rom-com shit in a medium filled to the brim with wish for film and isekai hype action shonen and uh whatever this is <laughs> You'd think that a genre like romance would be the least popular of the bunch, but lo and behold is- No, I don't think romance is gonna be the least popular of the bunch. I think that rom-com romance shows truly is the male power fantasy that people crave. Yup, isekai isn't true male fa power fantasy. Rom-com is. How nice is it is that you are a loser, pathetic version weeb, does nothing with your life, have never gone out to make actual relationship with people, you're a complete isolated neat and suddenly a perfect girl shows up and fucking saves you. That's literally half the shitty rom-coms out there to appeal to the degenerate audience that wants that kind of power fantasy. Each passing season proves the exact opposite with absolute banger after banger anime as I drown myself in a- Dangers in my heart is amazing though. Truly one of the few rom-coms where the author knows what a girl is like because they are a girl. A never ending stream of depression from shit I don't have. My ceiling creaks a little louder with each one. Alia can't stop spewing Russian propaganda. It's just one of the latest and greatest the genre has to offer. And while it appears to be just like every other one you've seen on the surface, it's exactly that, but it's so well done that you won't give a shit. I think that Roche today isn't actually the best rom-com of this season. I think it gets all the views because of scenes like this. There are tourists that don't actually give a fuck about the backstory of the Masatsuka, you know, Kuze family hold. The whole uh, mystery surrounding who the playground girl could be, right? All the stuff that's happening right now with the debate and the school election shit, no one cares for that. People only want to see moments like this where Yuki is coming out and doing wincest jokes time after time. I see the numbers, man. I genuinely think that people don't care about the plot. They only care about Yuki in this show. The plot is the same as most of the others, with a guy liking a girl, but being too afraid to admit his feelings for her because talking to women is scary. Oh, the homegirl abuse, mm. domestic violence. But unlike the typical rom-com where the girl slowly warms up to the guy, Alia, the girl in question, already has the hots for Kuze, the guy in question, and openly admits it in the very first episode, but in Russian. <laughs> Hey, it's just blend this, but all Yuki. That isn't really a surprise when it's literally the title of the show, but it does give it a unique premise. What's the rating right now? 8.6 out of 10. That's high as fuck. But it does give it a unique premise, and the fact that Kuze completely understands what she's saying unbeknownst to her is the cherry on top, as the cute gimmick also doubles as a defining plot point, all in tandem helping Alia buy for the best girl spot whenever Kuze's hot sister isn't cosplaying Toto. Brother. Most rom-coms never have the characters outwardly express their feelings until near the end of the series. To and for that reason, Alia is one of the worst girls to most people, because Masha, Yuki, all these other girls can already dial up to a 10 in a level of affection and the audience likes them more when Alia is also a tsundere so it's just like again the example I always give is Alia is a late game hyper carry while Yuki can just pop off in the early game and everyone just fawns over them and make it all the sweeter when they do confess so it's extremely refreshing that Alia not only does it right from the start in a comedic way but also has it be in service to her character of being so infatuated that she just can't hold it in <laughs> And that leads into revealing more of Kuze's character as well through just a simple gimmick. Specifically how he enjoys this special attention from her as he pretends not to understand and plays along. And also how he comes to rely on it when she does act coy with him but doesn't then verbalize it through Russian. Functionally creating a cute dynamic between the two that keeps you coming back for more. Because I think the confession will be this simple. Alia will leak her confession in Japanese. Recently, the most recent episode... She's being very affectionate and even is saying stuff that she usually says in Russian but in Japanese. I think there's going to be a moment in the future, whenever the confession happens, where Alia will state her love for Kuze, leak it accidentally, who knows, in Japanese because she got too comfortable. 
and the Kuze will at that point tell her I love you back in a Russian and at that point it'll be everything like completes itself now the whole secret is out and the confession has been made I think that is the best best way to do this confession now that's a little cringe for me to be like yep author of Roche today this is the way you should do it but in my opinion I think that'd be such a cool way to just wrap up the whole secret and the confession with him but does it then verbalize it through russian functionally creating a cute dynamic between the two that keeps you coming back for more because it's something we'll never achieve <laughs> speak for yourselves virgin losers i cannot relate subscribing to the channel outside of other characters joining in on the fun that is their daily antics that back and forth is essentially the entirety of the series with episodes primarily consisting of the shenanigans they and the rest of the cast get up to. well that's not the entirety of the series see there is a greater plot behind the scenes regarding the whole kuze family hold why they separated with yuki why colonel sanders on yuki's side is so fucking oppressive over the family and how he's literally got a skin in the game once Masatsuka to not even win the student council presidency. And then there's the whole student council president election cycle where Masatsuka is acting as a second for Alia, right? And we're supposed to get them to interact with each other and get to know each other and have these moments where Ali becomes more affectionate. But I, I genuinely think, and it's, it's basically this. Every episode is like 50% plot and the other half is just like random fan service slice of life shit. And everyone only cares about that fan service shit because Yuki pops off. Too, but it's the small things that it does which makes it stand out amongst its peers despite its simplicity like how fast the relationship progresses to the point of cheek kissing by just episode four is it progressing fast cheek kissing that's that's european customs though i know that she kind of uses this to steal a kiss but is it progressing fast how many episodes are we in right now Let's let's compare some other animes like Is it? We're on episode 10 and this bitch finally said cute in Japanese. I don't think it's progressing at all. Like let's compare it to like Changes in my heart. That shit's fast. Maybe it's not the best comparison. Let's compare it to Kaguya-sama. That shit's slow. <laughs> let's compare it to something else. Well, <clears throat> I think it's it's interesting with this one, because both sides are down bad for each other. So is Kaguya-sama, but they never really get their feelings across. Have they... Has Masatsuka and Ali gotten their feelings across? No. Would you consider end of Kaguya-sama season 1 and right now... No, right? I don't think it's that fast. It's, it's not slow or fast, it's just mid, I guess, in terms of how much of their affection has been leaked to each other. And it's unabashed shamelessness on behalf of both its characters and its fan service department. How much did the relationship change since episode one? Like literally nothing. What? What's new about them? Tell me. That she said kawaii in Japanese? In terms of how much they hang out, now there's an excuse to hang out together, but there hasn't been something where like... From the beginning, she's been gushing over him. And then the game is how much will she keep it a secret? I do not think there's... Any significant change since episode 1 except her slowly leaking the affection in Japanese in the most recent episode, which is just cute. I, I think it's slow as fuck. Apartment. You filthy degenerate. You thought I meant boobs. It never hesitates to go the extra mile and tread tastefully into water most romance anime would tend to avoid, consistently entertaining you every episode through truly understanding its demographic and the amount of base you can shove into one petite. I personally think that shit like this is the reason why people don't actually care about the plot of this show. I do. Most of the people watching this shit don't actually care about the story. They just want Yuki doing this shit. Anime girl. Like about three inches. Well, the mystery of who the Russian girl from Kuze Probably Masha. is Masha. Also plays into its method of dangling plot points and character development in front of you to keep you guessing, but works on them in the background while focusing on what it does best. <laughs> The production values being as good as they are serve to bring it all home, whether it be through ensuring every character has a memeable and adorable face, or by possessing detail. 
the, the Anya face from Spice Family. That happens a lot with like side characters too. Face or by possessing detailed animation to more naturally portray the character's feelings, even though a majority of it goes to the fan service. But it has an intimate understanding of proper comedic timing too, which allows the jokes to land as frequently as they do. All of which come together to create an anime that always goes a step further than you expect it to, not necessarily breaking any mold in the storytelling department like. I, at this point, think that Maki and Heroin is the anime that he's talking about right now. Breaking the mold, going beyond. The more I think about Roche today and what it is versus Maki and Heroin, am I crazy or is Maki and Heroin just putting in more effort in terms of going beyond the post? Just delivering more than just fan service to have an actual fucking story that everyone actually cares about rather than have the entire show be fucking dominated by this gremlin and no one else caring about the rest of the fucking story. Only as they do. All of which come together to create an anime that always goes a step further than you expect it to. Is it going a step beyond? I think Makain does. Roche did it? I enjoy the mind games shit with the actual plot. With the whole student debate. The no-no and stuff. Taniyama, the debate. That shit I really enjoy. But like, I really, I, I think that again, just like the... I don't want to hate on Yuki. Yuki is great. Yuki is fun. But the existence of Yuki, I think, is holding this show back from actually telling an actual fucking story. Dude, not necessarily breaking any mold in the storytelling department like the dangers in my heart, especially since most of us are here for the little sister memes. But in exactly what he just said there. Most of us here are here for the little sister memes. And that's the sad reality. Sex sells, incest joke sells, and that's it, man. Instead, basking in exactly what it is and loving every second of it. So it's too bad it's overshadowed by a bunch of losers. Nah, bro. Makin, I think in terms of actual anime, like, quality. A1 Pictures, I think, is blowing Dogokobo out of the water right now in terms of these two. Oshinoko is different. I think Oshinoko Dogokobo is putting a lot more effort into it. Roshitere, it's good. It's fantastic. But I actually think that this anime is better than Roshitere. I do. Too Many Losing Heroines is the anime everyone's been sleeping on, what with its immaculate production, expressive characters, and top-tier writing about a dude who functionally becomes the rebound guy for a bunch of girls because their Riz is the equivalent of... Negative Riz. The anime Riz. With our main character, witnessing best girl, Anna, encourage her childhood... Best girl, Anna? Dude, if this girl's your best... <laughs> She's a demon. She is a fiend. She needs to get crucified on a fucking cross. Nailed. Spiked with the with the thorn crown. She needs to suffer for her sins. She is the epitome of gluttony. She is so selfish and constantly steps over others, doesn't care about what anyone else thinks, and constantly suffers from her own sins. And every time that she comes to us crying about her la la life problems, I'm like, bitch who asked, get the fuck out of my face. Where's my bento at? Oh, wait, your dad gets paid in fucking Soma noodles. Not any noodles, Soma noodles. The most inferior noodle in Japan. I want you to think about that for a second. Entire family sucks. Good friend to go after the exchange student. He's so bro. She's just an otter. Otters are cute. Otters are affectionate. They are so wholesome. You ever see an otter holding hands with each other, just swimming on their backs, just like so happy? How the hell do you compare this demon to a fucking otter, bro? Her childhood friend to go after the exchange student he so clearly loves in a scene right out of a proper romance anime. Except this isn't that kind of show, so we immediately get to watch Anna force an indirect kiss with his drink, consume more <laughs> calories than Sam yep. Sulik, and be an all-around relatable dork. <laughs> I hate her so much, bro. Anna then ultimately weasels her way into nuclear- Well, I'm not even joking. I am not even, like, trying to make jokes here, trying to be funny. I genuinely despise this blue-haired girl and everything she stands for. Mizu's table, food, and wallet, in that exact order, and regales him with her touching tale of rejection. No one cares. The other no one asked. to marry her when they were five, yet he chose her other British friend instead. Based. Cotton so much better. And so, of course, that makes said Brit a soggy home-wrecking cow. 
Nah, skill issue. Also, Komari is the objective best girl in Makane Heroine. Yep. My opinions are actual facts. You guys have opinions. I only speak facts. Komari, number one. Don't care. If that didn't make it clear enough, Hana is not only a loser, but the writing, direction, animation, and basically every facet of the show goes out of its way to hilariously show you exactly why that is and to what extent. Absolutely agree. A1 Pictures is just fucking nailing this show out of the water. You, I can just tell quality when I see this anime. And then I compare this to Roche today. Yeah, I think that Roche today is def definitely going to get more eyes on it because of the Yuki fan service. But without Yuki fan service, what the fuck is Roche today, bro? A plot that I actually care about, but most people don't. This show, it's not just Anna. Lemon, Komari, Nuku, every girl, every character matters. And they constantly subvert your expectations. It is such a good rom-com to watch. Illustrating perfectly all the while why the childhood friend never wins as she stumbles through the entire rest of the series is a walking meme. Who am I about to make a name for myself here? But that's where the series shines, by crafting likable and relatable characters to the point that every scene showing their adorable friendships is yep. infectious, with the main character coming off less like your traditional romance protagonist and more of one who shares the same general theme as the girls who latch on to him. Komari is actually the best voice actor of the show, too. And maybe that's unfair. For example, ReZero, Better the Goose. I say that he's the best voice actor simply because of the clown fest dynamic range that his character allows his voice acting to go, right? So in that same example, Komari, you can tell that she is... Like, the voice actor is adapting this girl to the T, like, method acting. Like, Komari is supposed to be an introvert... Honestly, the more I think about it, I think that she's extremely confident and sometimes just does things that I never expect an introvert to do. But, you know, like a socially inept introvert kind of deal, eats, you know, uh, lunch in the bathroom by herself because she's supposedly a loner and stuff like that. And then the kind of the stuttering, the voice acting is just peak. As we watch the same guy monologue about being extremely meticulous in his choice of water fountain, that is kind of funny. His choices to specific ones at specific times, just to amusingly demonstrate that no, he doesn't have a penchant for Prime H two O because there's a better source for that. <laughs> he's just a huge loser with no friends to the point. Nuku, yes, he is a huge loser with no friends, but he's getting more friends. And honestly, the tap water, the, the tap water infatuation he has. The more I think about it, the more brilliant I realize it is. It's, it's a very unique quirk. Also, we share that with Komari and we bond over it too. Point well, who even stare at a wall just to avoid talking to people. Unlike CR929, who subscribed over on my Patreon because they're simply... Better! I am better! Okay. No character is exempt from being put on blast, and that's exactly why they're all so entertaining to watch, as they vibe together and play off one another so naturally that it feels less like a romance or harem anime, and more like a story of growth and maturity through the pangs of life. And I agree with that. It does not really feel like the standard rom-com, right? It's not like Nuku's just winning bitches over, no. He's just kind of there, and every other girl is just kind of suffering around them, and he just exists, and we just get through that shit. The whole Lemon Arc destroyed me, man. Lemon's closure. Fuck Mitsuki. Insisted upon by the teachers who advocate for sex. Yeah, these teachers are crazy. <laughs> this teacher <laughs> and her best friend is an alcoholic, and she is literally bugging the rooms, recording students, trying to figure out what their relationships are. It is insane. Who advocate for sex? <laughs> Not the kid you force! Alright, who do we have? We got Dr. Disrespect. Hey, yeah. We got Epstein, Drake, P. Diddy, and then where's EDP at? No EDP? Oh, there's more Kenyu members than this. The EDP should be on here. While the writing consistently the Diddy delivers force. on the premise of telling a story about some loser teenagers who get lost in the fleetingness of youth. With the production of the anime facilitating these things through both its beauty and how it gives purpose to every single little thing. Yes, like... The more I watch A1 Pictures anime, the more I realize how much greatness there is. The talent they have, the attention to detail, the background characters. I've been watching so many shitty isekais, mainly because every season there's just so many shitty isekais coming out, right? And not just isekais, a lot of different genre animes, too, like rom-coms and, and fantasy. But I've noticed that like A1 Pictures just nails background assets. Just... All these minor details, they go beyond what's just bare minimum. They don't just copy-paste random CGI assets and background characters without showing their faces and make them all just clones. No. 
every character seems actually vibrant. And even if they use CGI, it is so smooth that I can't even tell that it was CGI and then, and then the transition is so good. Stuff like that, the little attention to detail they have in the background scenes. And that's not even talking about the main shit, right? We're just talking about background shit. A1 is blowing every competition out of the water. Mm, not every competition. There are definitely great studios right now, such as Dogakobo, Cloverworks, right? Even Bandai Namco with Wistoria, but... A1, like, I'm gonna remember that name. Anytime I see that A1 Pictures has released a new anime for a seasonal anime, I'm gonna know it's gonna have that quality. It's that brand assurance. Like, I know they're gonna deliver, so I'll check it out. <laughs> now, <laughs> we just talked about everything great with A1 Pictures. Let's talk about some bad things about A1 Pictures. Especially with SAO. Do not let Reki Kawahara and A1 Pictures team up. Because... <laughs> There is some, like, A1 fan service is top tier, but, oh my god. The level of, like, <laughs> creepy, rapey, just, ooh, just, that kind of fan service, they just, <laughs> they're so good, but it's so creepy, and it's just like, ooh. NTR. The extremely detailed backgrounds that almost feel lifelike with their yes, small... Yes, the backgrounds. Details, such as shoes and other such items. Like, every one of these characters, every one of this will be just random CGI assets. Because most studios are just fucking giving a shitty budget to pump out another isekai this season, right? But the background asset, it's so detailed. It makes me feel like the world is more vibrant and alive and dynamic. It makes me feel like they care. And it's nice to know that they actually give a fuck. Items strewn about to show the students' lackadaisical attitudes help the environments feel real and lived in, denoting that the characters exist within these spaces and impact their surroundings, adding together so many small things into something bigger, and thereby assisting the anime in telling a visual story mm -hmm. about the characters and settings Absolutely without agree. to waste any exposition on it. Absolutely agree. What he just said about Maki and A1 Pictures, it's, that's it. Fat. And the character design and animation is likewise just as stellar. With background characters hotter than some anime's entire cast. True. Some side characters show up and I'm like, what the hell? Are these actually important characters or nah? Alongside exuberant character acting that's tailored to each individual's personality, portrayed through the animation to illustrate the vibrancy of youth, specifically through the pure amount of detail put into the movement of the characters, their crinkling fabrics, the changing of their expressions, and even the fucking tummy folds. Yeah, the tummy full up to the 10 lines. Bruh. This amount of effort put into every department is so rare and refreshing that it's no stretch to say the anime is a passion project for the staff yeah, working. Absolutely. This anime does feel like a passion project. This doesn't feel like they're just min-maxing, that they're just trying to crank out another anime. No, they care. And the endings too, bro. I know that Roche Tere does a new ending every episode. In my opinion... The ending visuals are extremely lackluster. I do appreciate the new songs at least, but the visuals are meh. <laughs> now, let's think about A1 picture special endings. Dude, that lemon special ending? I know that, I, 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 it, I think there's more quality here. Even if there's less, you know, and they're not doing a new ending every episode like Roche today, but the quality for the new endings, we recently had a comedy one. They hand drew every frame. The lemon one, so beautiful and tells us such a sad story that relates to exactly what the lemon arc was. So it even goes beyond just the episodes, like the special endings, man. Working on it over at A1 Pictures, as it's already amplified the source material into the stratosphere while still maintaining its innate charm, making its cast of goofballs feel real and alive, with the icing on the cake being how well the directing ties it all together with both its excellent comedic timing, nailing mm -hmm. the jokes even better than dedicated comedy shows, so sad he's so right though and <laughs> i don't think i've laughed out much nokotan jokes man like sometimes i'm like okay I, I don't know it's just this anime conceptually the jokes just don't land because i'm just not from those times and all the references have to do with past old boomer shit and japanese culture it just goes beyond me and it's it's this girl here and this girl is the reason why Nokotan is trash. Not trash, but it could be so much better if we don't have a, such an annoying fucking straight man that just goes against... Like, the entire formula is just everyone else doing crazy shit. And then the straight man having the reaction. But that reaction is so fucking annoying in mid, it just pisses me off. If only she could also be just as crazy and kooky with everyone else and just play it into the memes. 
Why do we need to have this straight man format? It's so fucking bad. I'd much rather her just like play along with it. Everyone just has a crazy time. Then I bet you it will be a much more entertaining experience. But it is what it is. Okay, comedy shows. I do love Nokotan though. Nokotan concept, like, I hate Kochitan, but I do love Nokotan. The whole Bashame Anko stuff was actually good too. Literally just remove this bitch, and the whole show just flows so much better. Gated comedy shows. In the simultaneous balance it finds for its serious scenes, where some episodes are an absolute roller coaster of emotions where you're both busting a gut and suffering from heartache over what mm. the characters are going through. Komari! That was such a crazy scene. Would have never expected Komari to confess at the end of that episode. I was fully ready to get cucked. I, like, we're doing fireworks and shit. I thought that Koto was just gonna confess and Komari's gonna lose. Komari makes the first move. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> OP, There's best girl. even more segments where the production shines, like in the very meta and jubilant opening where the characters play around with the mm -hmm. credits. But the absolute best part about this show is that if you stripped it down to the most bare bones animation you've ever seen, it'd still be fantastic. It doesn't play itself too seriously and engage in melodrama that needlessly draws out issues to pad the runtime, nor True. The only bit of that might have been with the lemon shit, but he's right. Does it up the comedy so much that you no longer take the characters seriously when it matters the most? Giving the right scenes the gravitas they deserve to make everything mesh together so well, while the writing knocks it out of the park for every individual character and their respective growth throughout the series. Making for an extremely mature show with so much emotion that it shines through in every episode, creating a series that will not the only ending, stand man. The lemon time, ending. but also become the most standout anime this season. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. The most standout anime this season? Ah, Oshinoko though. Oshinoko though, bro. Ah, if I were to... This season of anime... If I were to rate, like, the best anime... Probably Oshinoko Remake, man. Of the ones that I'm watching, anyways. So many other animes have just been disappointments, like Tower of God, for example. What a fucking terrible direction and animation studio that was, but... Makin Heroin is such a good fucking anime. And Roshitere too. Don't get me wrong, I love Roshitere. But my only criticism is that most people watching this shit doesn't even appreciate the plot because this gremlin dominates and... They're basically failing from success, right? <laughs> like, this girl is too popular. The Winston Stokes just to hit too hard. It goes way too viral, right? <laughs> but no one cares about everything else beyond that part. And I'm like, damn, no. am I the only one that gives a shit about the whole election debate shit? Ugh, whatever. I, I think the whole Masachika, Ayana Koji, Class of the Elite Parallels is fucking hilarious to me. And I do really love this show. But if I were to compare these two shows, I think that Makin is definitely better. And I think that Makin is... Probably the best anime this season for me. Wistoria? Wistoria is great. Wistoria is very simple. And it executes many repeated cliches and tropes that we're familiar with. I love power fantasies, don't get me wrong. And the execution of it is great. But I feel like it's a little bit limited. I feel like we're trying to nominate something for the Oscars. And we're bringing in like a cartoon. When there's like a fucking... Insane fucking cinematic experience here. Not, I feel like Wistoria is limited by the box that it's in, the label that it is in. If you know what I'm saying, I love Wistoria. It's fun, but Makain is, I think, just on a different league. It's a true passion project. I think that Wistoria is too. I think Wistoria is amazing, but like Makain, the more I watch, the more I realize A1 Pictures fucking loves this shit. They are giving it a god tier adaptation. I don't even know what the source material is, but it just feels like they care. And it is so refreshing to have an anime where I feel like the studio gives a fuck. Rather than it being another Isekai number 239 just to pump out for some shitty bottom line that they're trying to meet up. But hey. That's a great video from Mr. Totalini. Hey, please, guys, go give him a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here's a link. And I'll see you on the next one.